Hi there, welcome back to part three of this playthrough, review, walkthrough of Amori. Today we're going to do two quests. We're going to do Captain of the Space Pirates and Stick in the Mud. So we'll start off by just going back to the area that has the junkyard entrance and we'll enter the junkyard. So if you haven't watched the part before this, um, that explains how to get all the openings to the junkyard and get in there in the first place. Also, bear in mind that in the footage that you're watching, I haven't accepted the quest from TV Girl. So the three items that TV Girl wants haven't spawned in the junkyard for me. Uh, visually. Or if you've been following along and you have accepted from TV Girl the quest, when you go through here there will be three extra items and they're very easy to see and they're all on the main route so don't worry about it. I know you can't see them here but you'll see them dead easy when you're going through. There's a couple of melons to get in the starting area and you won't be able to go left or up. So make sure and get all the melons, especially the blue melon at the back of all the cars. This item, the gold watch, it doesn't really do anything. Kel is going to dig around in this open storage container with sort of piles of rubbish in it. Just introducing you to the idea that as you go through, you're going to be picking items up. So here, for example, this is an item, this little star looking thing. So this is what um, TV girls items are going to look like for you. They're just going to look like another one of those stars. You're just going to have more of them. So we get introduced to some new enemies, the mixtape. If you've been not running from everything, if you've been taking every fight and leveling up, you're going to have no problem. You'll pick up lots of recyclable materials that you can take back to the recycling machine later. You can also use ladders to get up on top of storage containers and into different areas. But it's all quite linear here at the beginning. You get some new enemy as well, the Doom Box. Again, none of these are challenging. I don't even think I have to talk you through any of these fights. These are these are pretty basic fights. I don't think I really use any skills now for the next like four hours of gameplay or something. So I do remember that down there, just past that little traffic cone that Amori had to cut there, that's where one of her items are. Um, so now you're going to go up to this little block that's blocking the way and we're going to get introduced to this new game mechanic. Uh, it gets introduced, it uh, feels like it's quite late in the game doesn't it, but it is, we're still early on in the game. This is just uh, telling you that you can tag different people in to do different actions now. So Omori slashes branches and traffic cones with his knife and Aubrey hits things with her baseball bat so if you ever need anything hard like hit through she's she's the one to do that. I know what you're thinking those little hard stumps you can't hit them with with Aubrey. Uh, I've tried that. That's not how you do that. Uh, you need something else for that later. So just carry on here. Uh, tag Aubrey and you can you can tag in the kids via the menu that's the long way to do it or you can just sort of hold the button down and and cycle through them like you just saw me doing we're gonna see what everybody else's skills are uh, later but basically Kel throws stuff and Hero is very charming so he's the one that you want to use when you have to talk to people who maybe don't want to talk to you you should be able to find all the items here really easily, uh, even the TV girl ones that, that unfortunately you won't see me picking up. Inside this little storage container here is the jigsaw puzzle that you need for Daisy. So that's the quest that you picked up uh, way back in the playground at the beginning. So now that you've got that, when you're next back at the playground you can give Daisy that puzzle to complete that quest. So that's that one done. And then the next thing you want to do after that is go up and talk to, you'll see this robot dog. You want to go up and talk to the robot dog 
and uh, at first the robot dog's not going to want to talk to whoever you've got tagged which is probably Aubrey um, but this is where Hero's like yeah tag me and I'm really charming so that's what you do go and get Hero and get Hero to talk to the robot dog and then it will very politely switch the conveyor belt for you so that you can move on. Of course you can't go through that locked door right now. We've got to do this conveyor belt section to get the key. So this conveyor belt section is all closed off. It's uh, just for the purposes of getting this key and then a couple of other key things. So you take the long conveyor belt all the way down first into the little fenced off area with the bookcases. And that's where you find the Comet Hammer, which is apparently a hammer made from meteors. And that is very good for Aubrey. Um, just a note on their weapons, they only stick to their same weapons, so Aubrey will have all the big strong weapons. Omori never swaps his weapon, he always has a knife. Kel always has like ball shaped weapons like tiny planets or, or little rubber balls or something. And um, Hero will always have some kind of cooking implement like a baking sheet or a pan or something like that. So after you've picked up the hammer and optionally given it to Aubrey, you don't have to, but you give it to her if you want. Uh, then you can talk to this other dog as Hero and he will swap the conveyor belt back. Just a note, I think you can swap away from Hero now and the dogs will be nice to you, to anyone now. So go back to the first dog and then take the short conveyor belt and this will allow you to run around the area. So there's a toilet and if you fish around in the toilet you can find some ramen in there uh, and that's a good note as well for the rest of the game whenever you see a toilet there's always noodles in the toilet i don't know why and then go down the sort of bottom where there's a pink robot dog and if you just walk towards the storage container next to it you'll get a little cutscene where this character jumps out kind of like the orange soda guy but he's called the life jam guy and he is going to give you a demonstration of life jam we already know about Life Jam, because uh, like, oh, I had already been explaining it before, but that's basically what you spread on your friend to bring them back when they're toast. But the cool thing about talking to Life Jam Guy is that if you go through this scripted fight here, where he'll just tell you to use Life Jam, uh, you can then get from him a present of jam packets. The difference with jam packets is that they will bring multiple friends back. So life jam can only be used on one person. Jam packets will, will bring back anyone who's toast. So they're actually a super good item. So after you fight him, uh, he has like taken everyone to toast and taken Omori to one and he very kindly heals everyone again to full. So that's good because you really don't want to be... Uh, <laughs> going on any further with no health. You can also buy life jam from him. I didn't because I didn't have enough clams, but yeah, you can. So after that you want to talk to the pink dog and it will switch the conveyor belt beneath jam guy. And you want to use that to get into the long corridor where you can get the junkyard key, the second junkyard key. Okay, and then talk to this dog to swap it back. This little dog on the side here. And uh, easy as that. And then you want to get the big main conveyor belt to go back the towards the entrance again. And then jump on that and just go all the way back. That's everything that you can get in this area. Done. None of TV Girl's items are in this area if you're looking for them. None of her items are in side paths like this. They're all in the main path. Okay, so then use that second junkyard key on that door and up you go into that little storage container. And then you go up a big long ladder. You get some items in here that sort of reflect areas that you might have seen before. Watch out for little piles of cans and piles of rubbish that have twinkling, twinkling debris because that's your items again. Again, none of TV Girl's items are inside any of these sort of more cave-like areas. They're all outside on the main path, so don't worry too much about that. It's all just recycling material and stuff like that. By this point, my Amori is level 10 and he's learned Hack Away. So that means he gets three attacks on a, an enemy, so I've swapped that into his 
uh, skills because that's super useful. You get all bunch of sodas and snacks around here. Head through into another little cave here, you'll see me going through it and then you'll come out into an area where Mary has a picnic basket. So that's, everything's cleared up until that point, so don't worry about it. there's no other little side paths or anything, that's it. So you can like save here and rest up if you need it and get the little item beside, beside Mary. At this point my Aubrey is also level 10 and she's learned Twirl, which means that when she attacks a foe she can become happy if she uses that. So that's a good one and I swap that in for her instead of her guard because that's uh, a good way for me to get her happy without her missing a turn. I also just for the sake of it I swap out Hero's guard for the smile skill because I don't tend to use guard, honestly. I think if you're getting attacked and attacked by an enemy um, you k kind of end up playing this game where you'll heal and they'll put you to one and you'll heal and they'll put you to one. So you need a better battle plan than just, well, I'll just guard for one turn. Make sure that you're going up all the ladders and collecting all of these items. I haven't cut any items out, so should all be here. If you go up into this little uh, area, there's two guys guarding a door there. Can't get in there. Okay, and then you've got this open area. This sort of, I think it's one of those dogs, but it's like a rainbow one and it's guarding that little entrance. So this is what Kel's skill is now. So Kel can throw things. So anytime you see one of these little podiums with a short ladder, you should tag Kel in and get him to run up it and then just get him to fire a ball. And he'll take care of that. So if you've got all the items around here, you can go through here now. No other side packs. Might have to swap back to a Mori now and again to cut a cone away to get some items behind or something like that. On this area you're going to have to use the ladders to sort of get towards all of the items on the top for the containers. Once you've got all the items on the tops of the containers, you can use the, the container roofs to then get to that second little ladder to go down. So there's this uh, toilet on the far right of this area. So remember and get the noodles out of that and fight the big shark over there. And then there's um, two open containers that you, one of them on the left you can't get into. So you have to go through a sort of cave system in this one. You should be able to quickly, if you move just in a U shape, find out how you can come out the other end. So that's the way forward. If you come out the other storage container on the other side, that's the way forward. So don't do that yet. There is a little bit more to see inside this cave. So you can go here and you can go get up on top of the containers and you have to cut away these two traffic cones. Swap to Aubrey, hit the big block away, and that will get you the D key. Uh, you can't pick up keys as another character, so you always have to swap back to Omori to pick up a key. Okay, and then if you go down the little ladders on the roof, there's another little melon to get. And inside is a meteor ball, which is a weapon for Kel. So you can give Kel that if you choose. And then back inside the little cave system again. 
My Aubrey's now level 11. She has a skill called Team Spirit that makes her and a friend happy. So I've swapped that for Pep Talk. And that's a really good one that I can use on her and Hero. And I just took a Twirl out of there because if she can get two people with that skill, she doesn't need the skill where she can make one person happy. So yeah, back into the caves and just keep going up, 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 up. You see me doing it. Come out where that shark plane is in that toilet and you'll be just above them with the melon there. And then just keep going up, up. The ladder's up here. You're going to find the binoculars in this little cave system. They have defense plus two. And work your way through the cave. The cave works much like its counterpart, the outside storage containers. You just, if you move up and up the cave, you'll eventually get to the top of the storage containers. And up here, you'll find a little couch. You can sit on here with your friends and watch the moon if you want. But more importantly, there's a joke up here. So yeah, you might want to write down in your little book that there's a joke at the top of storage town because later on when you get your joke book you're gonna have to come back and collect all of them so if you go back into the caves and then find your way back to that exit that took you through the little storage container on the other side you get out back onto the main path again and there'll be a little computer to fight and a melon to pick up and then you just go through the fences into the next area and that's that done just before you exit that area and come into this new area i think that's where uh tv girl's second item is it's just in that little corridor there as you come down here so the first one was right at the beginning of junk town i think junk town junkyard <laughs> the first one to play too much overwatch uh the uh, first one's right at the beginning of junker town and the second one is right there and in, in that little corridor that we just left. Okay, this is really weird. It never ever happens again, but if you tag in Hero uh, after you're allowed to, after this dialogue, he's gonna like call a little mouse friend and get his little mouse friend to eat this cheese, which is really bizarre. It never happens again. Never... Pretty bizarre. Like a lot of things in Amori, sometimes I think there's just like a... <laughs> they just had a neat idea and we're like, wow. It's not technically gameplay or anything to do with the story, we'll just put it in. Just an adventure in it. So after the little mouse numbs up all the cheese, you'll be able to get through this area. And you can see ahead of you a little sprout mole, a little girl sprout mole with a wee pink ball. And she sort of wanders off, so just follow her. And you get this long dialogue here where she just finds the mixtape, basically. But she's a big sweetheart fan. In fact, if you've been doing a lot of exploring and wandering around, you'll see that a lot of sprout moles are sweetheart fans. Sweetheart being the, the pop star who went out with uh, Captain Space Boy. So you try and convince uh, Rosa, the name of the little sprout mole, you try and convince Rosa to give you the tape, but she doesn't really want to. So now you like chase her, but don't worry, you don't have to rush. You, you can't lose her. So make sure you still get all of the items that you need to get. You'll follow her up a ladder. There'll be a little item to grab here. And then along the little rooftops and down the ladder. And she'll just give you the run around. So make sure and get, um, there's a melon and a toilet with some ramen in it. So make sure and get um, them and then she'll just run around and go up the ladder you just came down. So then just go back to where you started almost, up a ladder again. 
you find the TV remote item here and the baking pan. So the TV remote is just another charm and the baking pan is actually a, a weapon upgrade for Hero if you choose to give them it. You might have noticed as well my hero is level 11 and he's learned snack time which is a really important skill that means he can heal all of his friends for 40% of their heart. I took it and swapped it for the massage skill. Okay and then just go around uh, through the ladders chasing Rosa and eventually you'll get to, well you'll be able to see Mary on like a second picnic blanket. You'll have to tag in Aubrey to get rid of a block to get up to her. So see that little empty storage container just right of Mary's picnic basket? See the, there's an item above her but then there's one that's empty on this platform on the right? That's where um, that's where TV Girl's third item is I think. So I'm really sorry that I didn't record me getting them but that's I think that's where it was. Uh, make sure that you eat and save your game here so that everybody's full and you have a save point just in case you uh, don't win this fight. I think you'll be alright in this fight. I think it's quite easy but uh, this is a boss fight now. So if you go down through that little tunnel and you'll see Rosa and she sort of looks a bit glitched out. And then you have to fight this boss, the um, download window boss, <laughs> which uh, is really funny. I think the download window boss is fine so all you need to know about the download window boss is that they sort of don't do a lot. Um, you'll get a couple of attacks and it'll be like it's just 99% and 99% and then all of a sudden it will sort of just attack everyone at the same time and take quite a lot of HP off everyone so as long as you're full and you've leveled up enough you can take that hit uh, and you should be okay. So you can see that it roared all of my party members down to like under 20, all of them. So then I'd take a round just to like heal everybody up. I have quite a lot of skills that can heal multiple people at once and I have a lot of food items that can heal multiple people at once as well, such as the fries. And uh, yeah, Hero can do like snack time and stuff like that. So... That basically should be it. If you attack, 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 and then if the crash brings everyone to 20 and then you heal everyone and then just attack again, you should be fine. I don't think, in my, when I did it, um, it didn't get a chance to really attack me again, so should be okay. And while Rose is sort of out of it, trapped in this little TV world, you just sort of go up and snatch the mixtape off of her. And this is pretty much the end of the junkyard now, so you can see it's a pretty simple area, right? Um, takes a long time, but it's really simple. So off she toddles anyway after you take it off of her and uh, yeah there's nothing else as you can see there's nothing on the sides here nothing else to do so you just follow Rosa out of that southern exit and there'll be three little conveyor belts and you just go down them and they bring you back to exactly where you started. I uh, just tip over one of these big trucks which is actually just cardboard and you're right back where you started. So if you use the little um, squiddy entrance to just get back into the uh, area just east of the camp again where that little parrot is it will trigger a cutscene where you see that that planet that you fought earlier has run away now so remember earlier when you were on the sky bridge you saw that he was missing from the constellation it, well this is him now he's in real life he's been like running around I guess trying to get away from the guards So you agree that you will hide him from the, the, the pirates when they come by.
And it's also in this scene that you learn that this planet is Pluto, so you can stop calling it question mark, question mark, question mark now. You can start calling it Pluto. So Pluto basically explains to you that he wants to wander around. He doesn't want to just sit for the amusement of someone looking at him. And from this, uh, essentially Pluto decides to start traveling around and he will take people with him. Which basically means that fast travel can be unlocked now. So if you go to any of those little teleportation or transportation stations, of which you've found two now, so there's one just beside the entrance of the vast forest and there's another one just in the camp of the of this world. Um, so you can hop, skip and jump between them now by using Pluto. Just as a way of establishing that, the game will get uh, Pluto just to take you to the campsite, which is only just there, but anyway, you go through this little cutscene where Pluto takes you there. So another thing that happens is that Pluto, being like a kind of muscly planet, teaches Kel the skill Flex. And this skill means that Kel will deal more damage on his next turn. And it increases his hit rate for his next attack as well. It can be kind of a real uh, life-changing one for Kel because Kel's kind of a bit... He's, he's always the first one to go sometimes but then that that is a really good skill that makes him quite useful so i do put that on him and just take some time now to um buy stuff because you've you have a lot of clams now so you can buy stuff and also to go back to the recycling machine and you'll have so much recycling to do now unfortunately it's going to take ages and as you noticed in the junkyard fights at the beginning of them, you were just getting junk because the idea is that Kel was just like searching for junk the whole time. So as I was recycling, I actually got the flashlight out of the recycling machine. That's a plus four defense charm. And I actually put that on a Mori because I like Mori to have high defense. Oh, and after you get out of the junkyard and you wrap all of that up, do remember to go back to TV Girl through the little route um, that we discussed. If you don't know where that route is, just look at the very end of the episode before this and, and it's right there. Um, go back through that route and give all of those items to TV Girl and the reward for getting her those items is a stick of dynamite. Actually not worth it, but, um, you know, if, if you want to do all the quests anyway, then why not but it's really like a stick of dynamite it's not a great item but it doesn't matter now you've learned to tag people you've learned that you can use the powers of different members of your party so if you think about hero's skill he's very charismatic and able to talk to people so this is exactly the skill you need to be able to do the scarecrow quest that we left behind last time so if you don't know how to get that um well i can explain it to you very quickly if you go into this cattail field if you find the um, scarecrow and talk to him, you'll get the quest. If you're looking for more detail, then we did it in the last episode. But uh, if you've got the quest from the scarecrow, you basically just need to now tag hero and go back to the locations of all of those crawls and talk to each crawl. And after you've got all of the crawls, you go back to the scarecrow in the center, which there he is there, and talk to him. And he'll just be really grateful that you brought all the crows back to him and then he'll fly away. And that's that quest. Done. Pretty simple. And the reward for this quest is a five leaf clover. With the five leaf clover, it's basically that your luck increases uh, with more energy. So I've given that to Hero. So now that we did our little side quest, the only quest left to do now is the actual space pirate quest with, with the special mixtape. So for that, just go back to Captain Space Boy, uh, who's still in bed just sleeping, and there'll be a little cutscene to go through.
And then basically there's a, an argument about, um, well, the mixtape brings back bad memories so we shouldn't play it to him and then Kel just goes over there and plays it anyway. And what happens is that uh, Captain Space Boyfriend will wake up in an uncontrollable rage. And I would class this as the main boss fight of the other world. And a lot of people find this really, really, really hard. So I don't know how you're going to find it. I personally think it's fine, but maybe that's just because we're level 11, you know, and maybe people are under leveled when they're trying it, but I think if you're level 11, you'll be fine. So remember his main emotion is angry, so if you've not gone into the fight yet and you're like, okay, I just want to customise everything to be good against anger then that's a great idea and if you just go and save at Mary's picnic basket and then just swap everyone's skills and stuff, just have them able to combat anger, then yeah, that, I think that's a good idea. So just to go through it, he's going to have an increased attack and being that he's a boss, he doesn't just get angry, so he'll get angry, then he'll become enraged and then he'll get furious. So he's, he's going to have a really strong attack, but he's going to be really weak defensively. So if you do some, some good big hits on him, and then if you increase everyone else's defense, as far as that can go, during the, uh, during the course of the fight, if you're struggling with it, that is, then that, that'll be the way to go. So remember that angry beats sad. Angry is strongest against sad. So if any of your... Uh, party members become sad during this fight, make sure to get them out of that, shake them out of that. The best thing that they can be is happy. Now I have a general thing that I'm trying to do this run, or this playthrough where I'm making Amori angry. This just makes his uh, attack as high as it can possibly get. It makes him makes his defense low, the same as the boss he says right now. But yeah, it makes him... It's risky because if you do anger against anger, it's just about who's hitting hardest and who's hitting first and who's hitting the most. So it's risky. But as you can see, I very quickly get Amori angry in this fight and he stays angry through the whole fight, basically. And it works out really well, personally. I don't know if that's just luck. If Space Boyfriend had chosen to attack Amori more, I might have been in trouble. If, if you want to play it safe, just have everyone be happy. You can get group items or toys that will make everyone happy at once. The Sparkler is one of those. And uh, if you've been building it sort of similar, Aubrey has a, a great way to make herself and Hero happy at the same time. And, and she can do that multiple times so that they become not just happy but ecstatic, which is even better. So you see that when he does manage to hit everyone, he does do a lot of damage. And uh, Amori definitely gets into like, some sticky situations uh, midway through the fight. I find if you also have the skill Mock on Amori, that's really good because that's good against angry enemies. I would avoid using anything that mucks up the emotion of Captain Space for you because if you can just fight him angry, then at least you know what you're dealing with. If you use like Kel's Curveball or something like that on him, then uh, you're not going to kind of know what you're dealing with then. So as you can see, not, not a bad fight. Uh, as a reward, after it you get the eye patch. I don't know if you always get the eye patch after it, but um, if, it, if it's relevant to what level you do it at, but, but I got the eye patch, uh, which is another charm that you can get. I don't personally put it on anyone, but it's another charm that you can collect. 
and you should level up in that fight as well. So everybody I think now is level 12. So after you defeat him, basically what you've done is you've made him come to his senses and he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, you know, she was the love of my life, but it's over, I guess. And he is going to tell you a couple of things here. He's going to give you a train pass. So the train pass that he gives you, you're not going to be able to use it now. You have to kind of use it the next day, which means that you have to go away into the real world or Sunny's house or the faraway town or whatever, however you want to call it. You have to kind of get away there first before you uh, come back to Dreamland and then you can use it. The train passes for the train station if you remember the train station where we spoke to Leafy and uh, you can go up there and you can get on a train and the train will take you to a series of side areas and it's you can complete the whole game without ever going to any of the side areas and first time I played I didn't do any of the side areas actually um, but you're just going to be much more under leveled and uh, you're going to miss some, some really cool stuff as well so if you want to do all the cool it's not just a pointless side area it's like a whole thing so uh yeah definitely consider going to the train station we will be going there not in this episode but we'll be going there and the second thing that he gives you is a snow cone ticket or a voucher so you can go back to if you remember the I'll show you where it is in a second here, but if you remember when we went to like the frozen lake area where the polar bears were all fishing and and there was the little igloo and stuff, if you go back there to Jashi's snow cone stand, you can just hand over that that voucher and get free snow cone. The snow cone is like a huge big heel and buff for like the whole party. It's a really expensive item. So before you leave Captain Space Boy's uh, bedroom, make sure to get the E key off of his bed. And there'll be nine keys left now. And you're probably wondering where's the C key, but we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. It's in that other a ladder area that we haven't been to yet, the one in Vast Forest, the ladder that you go up that we haven't been up yet. There's a small area there and that has the sea key in it. And we just haven't done it yet. So we didn't get a lot done in this episode and it was kind of a weird one for me to cut because I wanted to keep going but uh, it is at like 40 odd minutes and the next part is quite involved so we're just going to cover like a ton of stuff in the next one. So for now we've basically finished Stick in the Mud, which is the Scarecrow quest, and Captain of the Space Pirates, which is to do all that stuff with with uh, Captain Space Boy. I'm always forgetting his name, I don't know what his name is, honestly. So we have Daisy's Dilemma, we have the puzzle now. Um, so, so next episode we're going to basically start off back at the playground, and we're just going to give Daisy that flower puzzle and then go from there, go up that ladder. Uh, into that area with the sea key, the, the, the other little uh, up upstairs area we'll call it. And then we're going to move on from there, we're going to do the, we're going to use the train pass and go to that side area and do all of that. Um, so we're going to take a big detour now, uh, basically when we get on the train and stuff, big big detour into all the side missions. So there you go, hope that helped. If we didn't get to the part that is concerning you yet, don't worry, there will be more. I'd like to thank you for watching and see you later.